It's Monday. It's June 5th. And the word of the day is matutinal, which means cheery, active, and alert in the morning. Used in a sentence, fuck you <laughs> if you're matutinal. <laughs> fuck you. Everyone hates you. You know what? I just, just, just the fact that you're cheery regardless of the time of the day. Have you seen now? I, 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 Have you been here? It's true. The morning only has one proper mood, and it is bitter, silent, coffee gathering. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, India embraces ignorance as their national anthem. Trump will make at least Jack Teixeira got Minecraft Discord server cred a genuine consideration. <laughs> <laughs> and Ron DeSantis almost kills Big Bird with his disaster of a campaign launch. <laughs> He was begging to be on this show. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, Snow Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, let's kick it off with something positive before we talk about the news. So, what's your latest book recommendation for everybody? Ooh, okay, so I've been really into cozy, low-stakes fantasy lately, so I'm going to recommend Lattes and Legends. It's about a retired orc fighter who opens a cozy coffee shop in a fantasy town. I could literally absorb infinity chapters of that. I would subscribe to Lattes and Legends. Okay. Uh, and I have taken a three-and-a-half-week hiatus from all forms of entertainment that aren't Tears of the Kingdom, so... Like the only thing I've read in the last few weeks is the odd Giga clan notebook. No, that's fair. <laughs> okay. Although I will say I didn't murder the author of Lattes and Legends. So who really loved what they read? Right, more? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Although I will say last book I read before that was uh, An Immense World by Ed Young. It's about animal sensations. Very, very fucking good. I highly recommend it to any of our All our right. There listeners. you go. Oh, I'm going to add one. I am currently listening to on a great recommendation from Stormy Decisis. To Like the Lightning by Ada Palmer. So good. It's part of a series. It's the first one. It's this amazing universe that I'm only a little bit into, but I'm already hooked. Uh, super future, talking about like philosophy of the, the society and everything. It's really, really good. Hmm. Fantastic. To Like the Lightning. All right. In our lead story tonight, Donald Trump is even dumber than we thought, which uh, it seems impossible, but it turns out we were dis-underestimating him, <laughs> I guess. So the latest round of stupid comes from the federal investigation led by special counsel Jack Smith into Trump having illegal classified documents after leaving office. And apparently that includes a taped conversation that happened in July of 2021 at his Bedminster, New Jersey golf course, very close to Eli, Ooh. in which Trump is <laughs> in which Trump is bragging to several definitely not authorized people about a classified document regarding military strategy against Iran while holding that piece of paper, which means the classified document got taken from Washington when Trump left, along with boxes of other ones sent to Mar-a-Lago, that's what he said happened, not given to authorities when they demanded all those documents on multiple occasions, and then taken to a fucking golf yeah. course in New Jersey, and then not given to authorities ever since in violation of more subpoenas and laws. What was he trying to prove to who? He's like a middle-aged <laughs> father of three sending you him and his wife's fuck tape so he can prove he had sex with a lady before. Yeah, man, you were president. We know you knew classified <laughs> shit <laughs> to, to the extent that you can know. I guess. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I speak for America, though, when I say we would all way rather watch our parents fuck tapes than watch Donald Trump be president again, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, and he's Absolutely. sad to do both. It's Exactly, yeah. So We've all seen what? Okay. Your parents fuck so, tapes, yeah. Yeah, we, we have seen your, yeah, your mom did yeah. send them around it. that time. <laughs> it's it wasn't a Christmas card. I told card you to was a weird send choice. them back. I sent. We learned about the Trump thing. Thanks to a report by CNN last week. And that's got to hurt extra bad when one of those failing journalism teams of fake news is fucking up your primary mm -hmm, campaign. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So according to the source for CNN, Trump was having a meeting with some people who were helping write a memoir for Mark Meadows, one of the four chiefs of staff <laughs> during the <laughs> Trump administration. Yeah, yeah. And thanks to Trump being a crazy person who brings an assistant to record every single meeting, even a really dumb meeting that he shouldn't record. 
He's on tape describing his own crime in detail. And he was waving around the piece of paper. Apparently, you can hear this on the tape. He's slapping it on the table, (laughs) crumpling it up, making (laughs) motions with it. Enough. Seriously, you can literally hear the physical piece (laughs) of crime on this tape. If the if the bank robber used the sack with the dollar sign as a grocery tote afterwards, it would be less <laughs> stupid. Yeah. yeah. Also, the funny thing I love about these crimes is that whenever they come to light, Trumpers use the fact that like Judge Dredd didn't come and immediately shoot Trump in the dick as proof that it's nothing. Uh-huh. But but it is a thing. The yep. consequences just take time. You've seen some of the consequences already, you yep. idiots. Yeah. Jack Smith is Judge Dredd. He just thought it's like, cool looking and awesome. <laughs> Sly Stallone accent. So why would Trump do any of this? Why would he do something that stupid and illegal? And it looks like the answer is he lost an argument the year before and was still mad <laughs> during during the meeting on the tape. Trump was complaining about his own hand-picked chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley. And the argument happened at the end of Trump's term in late 2020 when General Milley had to talk him down from attacking Iran. And the news about that made Trump look stupid because he was being stupid. So Trump was in a big snit about that. And the big snit was apparently still going seven months later when Trump packed a bag to leave Mar-a-Lago and head to New Jersey for the summer. And he said to himself, you know what? I'm going to relitigate that argument during a taped meeting at some point. Better grab a classified document about military secrets and toss it in my carry-on. Jesus. He did that. And just to be clear, the document did not help Trump's argument. Based on the account of the tape, it's just a plan regarding Iran written by Milley. That's the document. And generals will very often draw up contingency plans regarding almost anything like a military action they don't plan on making for example so trump accidentally recorded himself violating the espionage act while gaining nothing yeah well well, worse than that while proving nothing in an argument that could gain him nothing yeah yeah (laughs) and look nobody's against that just you know do it in the shower like the rest of us yeah (laughs) right right. (laughs) Here's a couple more details from last week. Check this one. On top of the revelation about the recording, the Jack Smith investigation also heard from a maintenance worker at Mar-a-Lago who helped move a whole bunch of boxes into a storage room on June 2nd of last year, which is the day before the Justice Department and the FBI showed up to collect classified material. And then in July, the government subpoenaed any relevant security camera footage at Mar-a-Lago. And that's when that same maintenance worker was like, hey, I- IT guy at mar uh, how long do you guys keep the old security footage before you delete it? I just, I don't know. <laughs> wow. I just wanted to know. So, yeah, could be nothing or could be so very obviously idiots trying to cover oh this whole thing. Oh, my God. So, hey, what kind of soda you want from the machine, Dave? Oh, you know what? I'll take deleting, Brandon. Hey, speaking of deleting, since uh, that was subject just came up, <laughs> we were talking about it. You say deleting, deleting, speak it. What? <laughs> yeah. de- also, Leave. keep in mind, he owns Mar-a-Lago. Yep. Donald Trump is catching himself doing <laughs> crimes at this point. <laughs> yeah. At Mar-a-Lago and his golf club. Yeah. <sighs> so here's my favorite part of the story. According to the source who heard the tape, Trump very clearly indicates that he knows the document is classified And he wants to physically show it to people, but he's aware that he probably shouldn't do that. And that means he was very clearly lying when he said things like, for example, I can declassify a document just by thinking it. Yep. Mentally declassify it. Obviously, that was absurd. But at the time, it sounded like something an idiot like Trump might actually believe. But the tape makes it clear that he was very intentionally lying and knew what was happening there. The only other explanation would be he forgot to think to himself, oh, also declassify that one. <laughs> <laughs> like right, like yeah. he mentally declassified thousands of documents minus one, and then he took that one to Jersey and waved it around and talked about it on tape to still lose the argument that he lost mm-hmm. with somebody who wasn't even in the room in Jersey. He wasn't even proving it to the general. Right. Nothing. <laughs> and and someone who, no doubt, didn't fucking care. <laughs> right. 
All right, I think we're going to need a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Aura Frames. Hey, everybody. I know we usually do sketches or songs or whatever when we get a new sponsor, but our sponsor this week is so awesome that we can just tell you about it. That's right. We're talking about Aura Frames. But because we want you to have entertainment, no matter how fabulous the sponsor is, we're going to do so after releasing this mouse into Heath's pants. Wait, 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 what? No, stop! If you have a kid as cute as mine, you already know what your mom and dad want for Mm. every single holiday. That's right. More pictures. He's on my leg. He's on my leg now. And sure, you could just text and email them into the void, desperately try to teach grandma and grandpa about album sharing, or spend hundreds of dollars printing them out like it's 1992. But you don't need to do any of that thanks to a Wi-Fi connected digital frame from Aura. Hold still. Hold still. Hold yeah. still. Now, this is not the digital picture frame you remember from the early 2000s. There are no USBs, no SD cards, and free unlimited storage. You can even preload pictures and add a personal video message that'll display as soon as the frame is connected. And that's exactly what you did, didn't you, Eli? I sure did. No, I actually bought an Aura frame when I heard it advertised on a different podcast, gave it to my mom, and she loves it. She can scroll through photos and videos, like her favorites right there on the frame all day long because Aura frames are easy to use for every member of your family. I got them. I got them. Nope. Okay, that's me. And right now, Aura has a great deal for Father's Day. Listeners can save by visiting AuraFrames.com slash Skeptocrat. That's Aura, A-U-R-A, Frames.com slash Skeptocrat. Use the code Skeptocrat, and you'll get $30 off plus free shipping on their best-selling frames. This deal ends on June 18th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. Aura Frames, exactly as excellent as you're imagining they're going to be. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. You you caught him? No, no, but we did come to... An understanding. Sorry, you came to an... I said we came to an understanding. And we're back next up in headlines in You Gonna Be Kidding Me News. Uh, We opened Pride Month with some terrifying news out of Uganda. Let's be clear, when it comes to LGBTQ rights, Uganda pretty much only has terrifying news. But it somehow managed to get even worse on May 29th when Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni signed one of the world's harshest anti-LGBTQ laws, tightening their already draconian laws and adding the death penalty for what the law calls aggravated homosexuality. Uh, it also includes a what? 20-year sentence for the promotion of homosexuality. Okay, aggravated? So bigot lawmakers in Uganda are working out what counts for that? Right. Being like, okay, one guy blowing two guys, that's medium gay, right? We all agree that's medium. <laughs> two blowing three would be aggravated? Is it, we're, do, we're doing ratio? or we, Actually, do I have it backwards then? <laughs> yeah, because the yeah. ratio, which way? <laughs> so I, maybe maybe if you're fucking to come down off a really tough boss fight that you're frustrated with, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, with, with all due apologies to my colleagues on this comedy podcast, there's no point in having a platform if you can't use it to highlight shit like this. So we're going to talk about this one. No, it's okay. We can work with this. We're just going to get some AI to frame the Ugandan president picking out wicker furniture and then the problem solves yeah, itself because go, if yeah. anything yeah. is aggressively homosexual it is now, uh, of furniture. course it, listeners will probably recall the international fear around a 2014 law that was dubbed the kill the gays bill in the international press because you know it was a law about killing people for being gay now in that instance the international backlash did force the ugandan government to water the bill down ever so slightly Uh, The death penalty was replaced with life imprisonment, uh, but that law was ultimately struck down by the courts. And the new law is, if anything, harsher than the 2014 law. Uh, That being said, it it was almost even worse. Oh, phew, close one. Cool. (laughs) Yeah, right. No, no. So like the law was originally passed by parliament in March, but the president sent it back and asked for a few provisions to be toned down. So in the newer version, for example, it's no longer a crime to simply identify as LGBTQ and Ugandans are no longer legally required to report suspected homosexuals. Because, you know, Museveni didn't want to murder people for their sexual orientation unreasonably. So the good news, uh, in so much as that anything 
related to this can be classified as good news, is that the international backlash has been at least as harsh as it was in 2014. Biden called the law a tragic violation of human rights, warned of possible sanctions, and said that his administration would evaluate the implications of the law, quote, on all aspects of U.S. engagement with Uganda, end quote. Uh, The U.N. human rights body said that they were appalled. Several of the largest corporate investors in the country have made cautionary statements about pulling out their investments. Uh, But for his part, Museveni has dismissed all the very real threats to his nation's economy and urge lawmakers to, in his words, resist imperialist pressure. Yeah, cool. Good luck with that. That uh, That's going to go great for you. Um, also, if you make me side with imperialism like I did just now, you probably did something horribly <laughs> wrong. There's right? something going wrong. Uh, Tim, if you're looking for poll quotes from this episode, I'd like to request you make me side with imperialism. <laughs> so, done right. And, and, and look, one of the most tragic... It's nuanced. <laughs> one of the most tragic aspects of this law, which is like picking out a worse David A.R. White movie, I know. But one of the most tragic aspects is that this law makes it illegal to transmit HIV. Now, so so it's already illegal to knowingly transmit HIV to a partner without warning them about your HIV status. That's already in the law. That's not what this one does. There is no provision to protect people who don't know they have HIV at the time. And not only is that tragically fucked up all on its own, but the obvious outcome of this is that people who have HIV are going to be increasingly tempted to guard that fact with their lives. And that's obviously going to have devastating consequences on the efforts to combat the ongoing AIDS epidemic in Uganda. And yes, they're aware of that, right? They know that's going to be the consequence. The ruling party's homophobia is bad enough that they're okay with making AIDS worse as a consequence of their efforts. (sighs) Now, Eli, did you also have a poignant news item that you wanted to use our platform to draw attention to? Yes, Noah, thank you, finally, to the real issues. Next up in headlines, in For Whom the Bell Tolls News. Fast food chain and the nation's number two exporter of explosive diarrhea, Taco Bell, has entangled themselves in a rather whimsical lawsuit this week, asking U.S. regulators to force Wyoming-based taco chain Taco John's to abandon its long-standing claim to the trademark of the phrase... Taco Tuesday. (laughs) Fuck you. Get out of here. I hope Mexico sues both of you for saying taco anything. (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) Wyoming based tacos. Okay. Eli, I'm, I'm dying of curiosity, as I'm sure are the listeners. Are you reserving the title of number one exporter for yourself? (laughs) No, no, no. That would be Ruby Tuesdays. Oh, yeah. No, duh. Uh, Ruby, Ruby Tuesdays. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it turns out that Taco Tuesday is trademarked, and this actually isn't even the first attempt to challenge the trademark. LeBron James tried to claim the trademark for himself in 2019. What? Unsuccessfully. Yes. That doesn't sound accurate. Yes, but. The nation's second worst case of TB stands strong, saying in their filing that, quote, Taco Bell believes Taco Tuesday is critical to everyone's Tuesday. To deprive anyone of saying Taco Tuesday, be it Taco Bell or anyone who provides tacos to the world, is like depriving the world of sunshine itself. Uh, t- uh, what? Okay. Taco Bell is like sunshine. It might feel good now, but it'll burn later. And and. <laughs> probably give you cancer that's that's the extent that you're allowed to compare anything you offer to sunshine taco bell the department of analogies has spoken okay just sell a pair on taco twos day there you go you're done Mm -hmm. yeah start a lawsuit about this yeah so the key question here is whether the taco tuesday trademark has succumbed to genericide what? a word of the day far less ominous than it sounds <laughs> all right it's, it was either word of cost or that we had no <laughs> other options you want it to be word of cost yeah so genericide is the term for when a word or phrase becomes so widely used for similar products that they're no longer associated with the trademark holder considering i had never heard of taco john's until i read this story but i had definitely heard of taco tuesday sounds about right uh, fun fact, some examples of trademarks that have already been genericided are cellophane, escalator, and trampoline. I just, I I find it hard to believe that the market for rhythmic child catapult is now or who has ever been large enough to support multiple brands to begin with, but I guess it must. <laughs> it must. So... 
You're probably asking, how has Taco John's responded to this assault from such a larger brand? With a promotion of their own, of course, announcing a two-week Taco Tuesday sale, and with its CEO saying, quote, I'd like to thank our worthy competitors at Taco Bell for reminding everyone that Taco Tuesday is best celebrated at Taco John's. We love celebrating Taco Tuesday with taco lovers everywhere, and we want to offer a special invitation to fans of Taco Bell to liberate themselves by coming to see how flavorful and bold tacos can be at Taco John's all month long. Bold. And while we quietly reflect on the fact that both the CEOs in the Who Owns Tacos news story are white guys. We're going to turn things over to our second sponsor this week, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. But then the grocery clerk says, Sir, we can't sell you pants till you're wearing them. Interesting. You know, this one, definitely about your mother. I knew it. I knew it was hey, going to be about hey mom. Hey, guys, what are you doing? Oh, uh, Eli's fixing my brain with dream interpretation. Yeah, it turns out Heath has some major issues with his mom. I, I feel like we knew that already, but Heath, if you're looking to work on your mental health, why don't you try BetterHelp Online Therapy? Oh, what's BetterHelp Online Therapy? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Wait, so I can find the right care for me without having to do awkward therapist breakups? Exactly. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right. Thanks, Noah. But before we stop, Eli, um, last night I dreamed I was at a pizza place, right? And then... Oh, it's about your mom. About my mom again. Good to know. Got it. And we're back. Next up in headlines, in Challenger launch news, <laughs> things went very badly for Ron DeSantis when he tried to officially launch his campaign for president. What happened? Broken. What? Internet's broken. All right, I'm going to log out and log back in. Unplug the router. What? Unplug the router. Unplug. I already did that. How long did you wait? You definitely. Did it, that that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. You do, it absolutely matters. You got to no, wait ten seconds. That's not a real thing. Yes, it that's is. not a real Look thing. No. Uh, uh, fine. I'm gonna give it ten seconds. Count it out loud. People are wrong. Shut the fuck up. You shut up. You fucking Irish peasant. Oh, now I lost count. Start again. Ten, nine. Whatever. No, eight. that's enough. I plugged it back in. Okay. No, is it working now? Yeah. Did it work? It's it's been working the whole time. Oh. And did it back. have me calling Heath an Irish peasant? Yep, sure did. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they do. And we're back. Ron DeSantis officially <laughs> launched his campaign for president. <laughs> and it went way less smoothly than our announcement just now about his announcement. And that's because he decided it was a good idea to host his big launch event with Elon Musk on Twitter using their new Twitter Spaces platform. Heading into the big moment, they had about 600,000 listeners. And according to Elon, they were gaining 50,000 new people every minute. So they fired up the live stream and everything immediately crashed. Yep. Immediately. <laughs> like a Tesla at a crosswalk in front of a daycare. <laughs> Tra <laughs> Tragically. I love the part where they tried to pretend that was a good thing, right? Like they were so good. Like they were like, well, it looks like we we're so popular. It broke the internet. It's like, no, you broke Twitter. <laughs> You broke Twitter, <laughs> motherfucker. That your thing was the third largest live stream in the history of that night. <laughs> Jesus. We're so popular that nobody likes us and the thing we're in charge of is broken. What? <laughs> <laughs> we're too girthy for the internet. So <laughs> at this point, some IT guy was obviously telling Elon and Ronnie to shut it down and try again. But they're both sociopathic idiots, so they just kept talking. The audio coming through for everyone on the platform was just insane garbled nonsense a bunch of aggressive feedback every so often random dubstep was playing and this went on for 20 straight so minutes long. while they tried to just plow through it people were confessing to 9 11 like they were cara santa maria at gitmo it was really bad <laughs> but finally the it guy must have pulled a physical plug somewhere cutting off the stream and then eventually he restarted it so finally 25 minutes into the event 
DeSantis managed to get out one sentence of clear audio, which was basically, mm, you should put me in charge of the country now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and honestly, given what a boring and unengaging speaker DeSantis is, this might have been a blessing in disguise for him. Yeah, the tech guy walks out of the building, his limp goes away, he uncovers his (laughs) mouse ears and puts on his large white gloves. (laughs) All right, so what went wrong here? Lots of great answers, actually. According to the event moderator David Sachs, quote, I think it crashed... Because when you multiply a half million people in a room by an account with over 100 million followers, which is Elon's account, I think that creates a scalability level that was unprecedented, end quote. What? Um, yeah, not clear why you'd multiply I was those numbers. Multiply. No, there's no That's fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> no reason to do that. Whatever. They had the number 50 trillion written on a fucking napkin for no reason. And they were like, That's not scalable, right? That's big. We're going to do a reboot. But now they were down from having over half a million listeners to about 40,000 when they restarted. So DeSantis announced his campaign, (laughs) kind of like an atheist podcast in terms of audience. (laughs) Well, okay, Uh, not like the best ones. No, not a big one. But like a medium, mediocre, (laughs) meh, atheist podcast. I was going to say, Seth will slap your face, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Also worth mentioning, since taking over the company, Elon fired about 75% of the Twitter staff. And that might explain why the Twitter spaces thing was not even close to being ready. According to a former developer, almost exact quote, that shit is janky. Elon just took the Periscope platform from 2015 and told the like two people left in the office to fluff up the code a little bit and call it Twitter spaces. And they used it. For this thing. Okay, but so, but honestly, though, how is Ron DeSantis supposed to know that Twitter Spaces wouldn't be the single thing Twitter has done since Elon bought it that wasn't an unmitigated disaster? Come on. Like, realistic. Yeah, no, there's there's no way to, like, look at the value of the company or anything. No. It's down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we just heard about what went wrong on launch day. But the problem actually goes back a bit further. I'll try to explain. So, um... Okay, when a Florida man and a Florida woman love each other, (laughs) um, nothing good happens. In this case, that would be Father Ronnie Sr. and Mother Karen. His mom is Karen. We don't talk about that enough. Literally, his mom is Karen. So Ronnie Jr. finds a way to make it as a white guy in Florida somehow. Goes to Yale, Harvard, the Navy, Congress, governor of Florida. Uh, Fascism, fascism, putting fingers, fascism. Blood feud with a cartoon mouse, loses that super hard, big snit, bunch of ugly crying, lots of pudding fingers, (laughs) and then he teams up with the heir to a South African blood emerald fortune to do a failed live stream. And, of course, that was all meant to distinguish himself from the gauche golden elevator launch by Donald Trump. Ronnie D was much more tasteful, I would say. So, now we have DeSantis and Trump playing this insane game of splitting tiny hairs about the nuances of their slightly different hate crime platforms that they each have. That's the GOP now. That's what yeah. they're looking at. You guys remember when we were scared Mitt Romney would be president? Yeah. <laughs> it's better times. Yeah. And in out dia news. It's a <laughs> terrible one. But it, so if you want to see what American education might look like under a President DeSantis, India has a sneak peek for you. Because much like conservatives in the U.S., nothing benefits the administration of authoritarian Prime Minister Narendra Modi like people not knowing shit. So he's dialing back on all the knowing shit. We learned last month that India's high schools would no longer be teaching the theory of evolution, and we now know that joining Darwin on the chopping block are the periodic table of elements, lessons about diversity in politics, lessons about political parties, the history of the Industrial Revolution, and Everything related to water pollution, air pollution, or resource management. Okay, I get most of that. It's horrible and ignorant, but that's conservative politics to get rid of most of that. But the periodic table? They think it's like a liberal conspiracy from 
Big Adam? What the fuck are they talking about? I mean, he you only get six in before you get to carbon. And we all know where that <laughs> leans, right? Well, actually, getting six in is the problem. I'll, I'll actually get back to that in a minute. But so I, I should point out that the decision-making process here, it's been completely opaque. So we can't say for certainty why the various cuts were made. And when you consider the broad range of topics that are being axed, it's clear that the reasoning wasn't as simple as religion did it. But religion did it. <laughs> so th this whole thing was born out of a fear that modern science threatened the supremacy of traditional Hinduism and it snowballed out of control from there. And since the Narendra Modi administration was also born out of fears about threats to the supremacy of traditional Hinduism and snowballed out of control from there, they embraced it. Yeah, I mean, we think Christians are having a hard time holding on to their stuff. Traditional Hinduism is still standing by shit like that mountain is one of Ganesh's teeth. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, so when the National Council of Educational Research and Training, or NSERT, made the first changes a couple of years ago, they said they were just trying to simplify the curriculum during COVID, uh, you know, for all the remote learning. Now, these were the changes that first ousted Darwinian evolution, so religious conservatism's fingerprints were all over it from the start. But they kind of pretended that evolution was just removed to save space in the syllabus, you know, even though teaching fucking biology without Darwinian evolution is like teaching math without multiplication. So academics <laughs> freaked out. They signed petitions. They protested. But NSERT got away with it. So in May, when the new textbooks for the upcoming school year were released, we learned that those changes had suddenly become permanent and they'd expand it. Hey, uh, I'd like to do some imperialism again. Like, I really don't like this happening. <laughs> but I want imperialist get rid of religion in yeah. the world somehow. Sorry, yeah. Tim, if you're still listening, I'd like to go with I'd like to do some imperialism. Yeah, again. right. I might okay, as well. I'm talking like, I'm saying like Iceland, right? They're the most <laughs> secular. Like, if Iceland, they could imperialize in this one way. Everybody, <laughs> you want the Iceland to get rid of religion in India? To Iceland. Make it happen. Now, so. What color? I look like a fuck all. No. <laughs> The choice of what to poll can seem baffling to an outsider, or at least some of it can, as Heath has already pointed out. Most Christians, after all, don't take issue with the periodic table of elements, but it does directly conflict with Hindus' teachings about all things being made up of five elements, so it oh, had to go. Seriously? That's yeah, why? That's it. <laughs> They, they also that's yanked so a lesson on Michael Faraday's contribution to our understanding of electromagnetism and unless that's a concession to juggalos, I have no idea where that one comes from. <laughs> Maybe the turtles are stuck together by magnetism. Open your <laughs> mind. <laughs> well, you would think Faraday would help then. But but so but it's far easier to parse the thinking behind removing lessons on like alternative fuel sources, pollution, and the political opposition. Okay, so those five elements are earth, water, fire, wind, and space. Yes. So how's it going to work in like the textbook? If there's like a tank of hydrogen and a tank of oxygen next to each other, is that now like a, a blur that says water? <laughs> like, what? Okay. Okay, but we can all agree that that fifth element space is better than heart, right? That kid on Captain Planet got totally screwed. Totally Let's fucked. just admit that. No yeah. powers. No <laughs> powers. Now, of course, NSERT defends themselves by pointing out that none of these subjects have been completely removed from India's schools. They've just been removed from the core curriculum. Uh, they, they, there are still a, like elective classes for the equivalent of junior and senior students that would include stuff like evolution in the periodic table, which, given their foundational importance to the subjects of biology and chemistry, is about, I'd say, two clicks above displaying the demolition notice in the bottom of a locked filing cabinet in a disused lavatory with a sign on the door that says, beware of the leopard on the scale of informational sincerity. <laughs> Look, we can't stop you from learning about evolution. We're... We're seeing how that goes in Uganda first, Yeah, right. But we, we, yeah. we're doing a test market. Whew. Now, obviously, nobody in our audience has to be reminded of why banning knowledge is a bad thing, but, but I think it's worth reflecting on the progression here, right? It started with religious conservatives demanding that their leader be vested with authoritarian control over educational standards so that a cultural thing that they object to can be removed, right? And, and then the cultural thing is removed. There's a huge backlash. People flame themselves out fighting over it. And then their leader, now vested with that power, goes back and takes out anything that might threaten his leadership. And, and by now, everybody's too worn out from the last battle on educational standards to get all fired up for another one so quickly. So, you know, fucking first they came for evolution by natural selection and all that shit. <sighs> And finally Hitler tonight. Hitler was an atheist. <laughs> exactly. And finally tonight in Gardent in the Roof News, 
It's been a weird year for my home state of New Jersey. As regular listeners will remember, earlier in the year we were attacked by perilous pounds of purloined pasta, and just this past week, a metallic object that punched a hole in the roof of a central New Jersey home, smashed into a hardware floor, and bounced around a bedroom, turns out to have been a meteorite. Okay. Oh, man, fresh off the pasta, I was hoping for meatballs. But no, I guess this will work. This will work. <laughs> Cloudy with a chance of meteorites. There, there you go. go. Yeah. <laughs> also, Eli, the, the pasta wasn't purloined, or at, at least we have no reason to believe it was. It was, however, prohibited, perplexing, and pell mell. So. But- it was in Jersey. I feel like there was some reason to believe most things in Jersey are purloined. <laughs> exactly. Right? Thank you. Prostituted. Nope. nope. Scientists with the College of New Jersey (laughs) determined that the six by four inch object, which weighs about 2.2 pounds, is a rare stony chondrite meteorite. Uh, Side note, the Associated Press article where I read this story goes on to explain, quote, they came to that conclusion after conducting a visual examination, making density measurements and scanning electron microscope images, end quote, as though they're aware we're not going to trust any information coming out of a place that calls itself the College of New Jersey and needed to clarify that this wasn't (laughs) Just two guys named Tony saying, looks like a fucking meteorite to me. (laughs) That's still not clear. It it came through the roof, right? Who the fuck was still holding out for Hinox angrily hurled it down from a sky island until they got the scanning electron microscope involved? And yes, I know there are no Hinoxes on sky islands, but flux constructs don't exactly angrily hurl rocks. Now, do they? (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Good news. I like the inventors of Link. (laughs) No, you didn't. Uh, his no, name you is did. No, you fucking didn't. <laughs> uh, now, My favorite dinosaur is pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> now, the good news is nobody in the house was harmed, and the owner of the home, Susie Cop, said that hazmat officials responded to their home to check it out along with the family in case they'd been exposed to some kind of radioactive material, but those checks were all negative. Well, as negative as they can be when you live in New Jersey, at least. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I feel like the meteorites family was probably nervous about the same thing when they learned where he landed. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of new slur words at the meteorite house this week. Like, <laughs> fucking creative shit. Didn't think they'd have all those. And look, much as it pains me to say this as our program's only Jew... The very first thing I thought about when I read this story was, I wonder how much that meteorite is. I think uh, same here, man. Same mm-hmm. here. <laughs> Don't worry. I looked it up and it could be worth as much as a million dollars, depending on the rarity of the chondrite. So, yeah, if uh, any alien hooligans are listening, I have a very fragile roof and uh, I make hilarious noises when startled. <laughs> <laughs> same goes for Hinoxes on Sky Islands, by the way, if you're listening Exactly, yeah. It's worth up to a million dollars for that little thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I had to see how much it was per gram and then divide the grams by the weight that was reported in the article, and I'm sure that I'm wrong in some yeah, way. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's certainly going to be worth a hell of a lot less than that, but it could be. Could be. But it could, Okay, does the family get to sell it to, like, a science thing they or whatever? They must get to sell There's no yeah. way yeah. There, that someone gets to not make them sell it or whatever. Okay, cool. Good story. With uh, some possibly good news for that Jersey family, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions, thanks to Eli Bosnick, and thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that, please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the new generous stoners, you will be complimented next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penist. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. How is Ron DeSantis supposed to know that Twitter spaces wouldn't be the single thing Twitter has done since Eli bought it that wasn't an unmitigated disaster, Heath? How could he have possibly know? <laughs> I think you said Eli. You said Eli. Oh, I did. I did. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Paging Dr. Freud. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, seriously, when that news broke, everything about that news, I'm just like, well, this is a Skeptocrat story right yeah, it's here. It's a Skeptocrat story. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. <laughs> Trying a little hard, Ronnie. Trying a little hard. Several things happened, like, the day after we released an episode recently. Like, yeah, a bunch of episodes keeps, in a row. It keeps happening like that. It does that on scathing, too. All the good fucking... Religious atheist news every breaks time, Thursday. Yeah. It's always Thursday when all the good atheists. News Jerry breaks. Falwell Jr. fell down the stairs on a Thursday, and yep. I was like, "How? Sure did. Dare sure you, the sir. fuck did." It's like, God damn it, we could add first crack at this. They gave us four seasons <laughs> landscaping day before we record, like day of record, just in time. I feel like we take that and run. And okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, no, yeah, for no, the rest fair, of time, so. we're ahead. All right, yeah, well, you're, right. you're right. We have to just be cool with it. Yep. <laughs> Four seasons total. Like, That's the funniest <laughs> fucking thing that funniest ever happened. It's ever happened. literally it's ever happened. by far. The, you can't beat by it. By far the funniest thing that ever. And I'm counting fiction. <laughs> yep. right? I'm counting stuff that didn't really happen where you get to make up the setup and you get to knock it down. <laughs> That's still the funniest of all the fucking things. All of comedy just that night was just like, I don't know why we're even here Giuliani's anymore. Giuliani's stupid face. And, and then he... <laughs> Finds out during yes! that he's oh, lost. Oh, God. There was a punchline. That's the thing is that the setup was so fucking funny. There didn't have to be a punchline, but then there was a punchline. Yep. You call what? You <laughs> call the race. Your, your guy lost. What are Who you doing did? Here? Oh. The only way that could have been better is if the melty thing had happened right then, right? Like the melty thing started. If it started right as he was yes, getting that right. information. Yeah. yeah. That was the only, that's literally the only way that could have been improved. Yep. <laughs> It just gets even more aggressive. It's like a little oil, Derek, coming out. It's like <laughs> so the key and Bill sweat sketch. A little bubbling crude. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, your heartbeat is like really weird in terms of rhythm. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights.